welcome everybody. We are very pleased to have today in Give Me 10, Ty Gibson. He's a speaker. He's a writer. He's an all-around good guy most of the time. He's just, he has, he has the coolest haircut for somebody who's 52. I just want to let I you know that. Myself, Roger, and <laughs> you apparently don't have any haircut at all. What happened, bro? What? This, this, this is this is called this is, <laughs> this is called maintenance free haircut. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is thank my COVID you for, uh, cut. Yes, right. Th thank you for coming on to the this short and intentional for leaders and mm. people who support them. We want to talk about preaching, speaking, connecting, All right. especially mm -hmm. with people who who are far from Christ. So I'll, I'll start with the most obvious question. People admire from afar. Not, not a lot of people get to have a, re a personal relationship with you. But tell me about the last sermon you bombed. And by bomb, I don't mean like it was awesome. Like, it, man, that was a bomb. No, like, man, that truly and right. absolutely. Like, like it, it's terrible <laughs> that when you're preaching it, while you're preaching yeah. it, you say, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. When, when did that happen? Yes. How do you feel? Um, it was about two months ago. It was a message that is actually online. It's on YouTube. I don't want to direct people to it, <laughs> but uh, this message is uh, has has a really good title: uh, "A Strange Case of Mistaken Identity." Come on, Roger. That's a good yeah, title. It's good. A it's strange good. Yeah. case yeah, of yeah. mistaken identity, and and it involves the necessity of telling a story and telling it well about an eagle who thought he was a chicken. And okay. I completely bombed it. The whole time I was telling the story, I knew it was going south fast. I knew people were looking at me, their faces, everything about it was, this is terrible, stop, you're not doing a good job. And yet the whole thing was being filmed and there was no way out. I was in this, I was in quicksand. So I just had to keep telling the lame story in the lame way. And then I had to, from that story, I had to make some kind of theological sense <laughs> out of the mess I had just made. When I was done with that sermon, uh, I went through kind of an adrenal crash. Uh -huh. I went and sat in my car. <laughs> I sat in my car with my hands on the steering wheel, just thinking, wow, that was bad. That was bad. Yeah, it's, oh, sometimes yeah. sometimes it sounds really good in our head, right? Like in, yeah, yeah. In, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you wrote it down, it's like sound, but then then you actually preach it, and you're like, oh no, that bomb. Uh, so, but I, I, have, I, I have learned. I have yeah. learned over the years. Let me say this: I have learned over the years that oftentimes what feels like a failure in the preacher's head didn't yeah. land as a failure on the people's ears. You know, some people will say, wow, I was so blessed by that. I'm thinking in my mind, well, I just preach heresy, you know? Yeah. So well, how, how is it that you were blessed by what to me, you know, I would disfellowship me for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so so let, let's talk about uh, preaching to the secular mind. If When you're thinking about people who are far from God or, who, who you know, trying to lean in, mm. how do you choose the topic? Can you give me a couple of pointers if a pastor is it's, uh, yeah. listening, watching this now, listening to this now? What would be a couple of points for them, a couple of things that they can do as they choose what topics to preach on? Well, I think the most important thing to do for, for the preacher is to keep your finger on the pulse of the culture. What's going on? What are people thinking about? What are people talking about? Because whatever they're thinking and talking about in the broader culture, you can be almost certain the people you're preaching to are in touch with that subject matter. They've heard it, it's impacted them. And so, so I'll pay attention to what's happening in the culture and then I will, I will try to speak into or use as a launching pad, whatever it is that is buzzing in the culture. That's and, one and thing. How, the other thing. Wait, 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 before before you move on to the second thing, how do you know what's buzzing in the culture? Is that, are you do you get that through social media, through your reading, through yeah. the news? How, how do you social how, media? How do you know? Social media mainly for me. You know, I'm active on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, and so and just recently in the last oh six months, I've been 
uh, spending a few minutes each day just perusing TikTok. What are people talking about? What are what are they doing? What are they thinking? What are they? So, yeah, you. I don't think that the preacher of the gospel can really be effective by being completely detached from the reality on the street level. I think right. that now that's not to say, of course, that you immerse yourself in the ideologies and the arguments of the time, but you have to be intelligently tuned into it if you're going to actually speak the language of the current moment. And so, so here's some language uh, for all of us preachers. Um, that I use for myself. I ask myself the question, what is this cultural moment about? Okay. Well, that, that, okay, then I need to talk about that. I need to speak into that. Um, so that's for me. The second point I would make, Roger, is how do I know what to preach? Well, how do I decide content, subject matter? For me, and I think it should be for everyone, I'm convicted about it, uh, Romans 10, 4 says Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. The word end there is telos, T-E-L-O-S, like teleological or telescope. Literally, Paul is saying Christ is the end goal. Christ is the totality of the point. Christ is where this is going. Jesus is it. So it doesn't matter what I'm preaching, no matter how relevant to the moment, I need to always use whatever I'm preaching in order to get to Jesus as the answer, the point. Jesus is the end of the law, the end goal of all of scripture. And I would go a step further than Paul. Actually, Paul does do this in other places. Jesus is the end point, the end goal, the totality of the trajectory of all history. Everything lands in Christ. So all my preaching had better land in Christ. Okay, we have uh, like uh, three minutes left. This has been gold. Okay, Fantastic. go, 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 go. Let, 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 let me just ask you, every preacher hits a wall, right? That things yeah. are not flowing yes. and you're like, well, what? what? How, does that happen to you? And when it, yes. when it does, or if it does, how do you deal with it? Well, I, I oxygenate my brain with physical exercise and okay. I inform my emotions with beauty. That, those two things. I oxygenate my brain with exercise, go for a long walk, push some weight. I exercise, I oxygenate my brain and I recalibrate my emotions with beauty by listening to music in my case. So music, always brings me back it doesn't matter how dark it gets or what wall i hit music always recalibrates my emotions now you you've been known to sugarcoat things and not be very direct uh you've been known to not be very frank and honest as you speak i'm just kidding honest <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 yeah, you've been known not to uh, not to share all what's in your heart. Uh, just just very mild topics, no spice in them at all. Uh, Completely kidding. Ab okay. Absolutely, absolutely. No, you you you're known because you speak what's on your heart, right? You 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 speak truth into the culture. So I see it on Twitter, particularly. Uh, where mm. you get blow blowback from people, uh, and yeah, yeah. They, they tell you everything from that's the greatest thing somebody ever said to you're you're the second incarnation of Satan. So how do you deal? <laughs> right. This is my last question. How do you deal specifically with criticism, especially when it becomes personal? Well, I I try to deal with it by thinking that the person offering the criticism. Uh, means well, and I just let them off the hook. So I have a policy regarding social media, for example, if you, and you probably noticed this because I track with you, you track with me. I don't respond to negativity. I just mm -hmm. don't. If somebody says something negative, I think they're either having a bad day, they had some bad tacos, or they are meaning well, but they misjudged and they got the wrong guy. So I just I just shine it on. I just go on and I assume that people mean well 
there are some people who don't mean well. There are some people that are just mean spirited buttholes and they uh, they're out there trolling and they're trying to, you know, gain followers by their negativity. Mm -hmm. But I don't respond to the negativity. Don't respond to it. Yeah, I, I, I see Twitter as my opinion. So and then you can put your opinion, but I'm not going to give you my opinion about your opinion. I just gave you my opinion. That's right. I yes. like that. I'm not giving yes, you my but, opinion about I'm your not, opinion. I like you that. Yeah. to change opinions here. Dude. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. All right. So thank you very much, Ty, for being with us. I, I sure. admire you from afar. You're a good friend. You're a good person. Uh, if you were in a room uh, with David Ashrick, just you and him, who would stop talking first? Would it be you or him? <laughs> who would stop talking first? Uh, I think I think that we would probably find ourselves wrestling one another to the ground verbally, <laughs> <laughs> and and probably I would tap out. <laughs> All right, we, we're going to link to the description uh, your Bible study series and any books that you have. And your ministry you. libraries. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, my guest Pretty today is Ty Gibson. Thank you for sharing your heart with us, Ty. Thank you, Roger.